So I want to show you guys a handy tool that's pretty darn cheap. This is a set of angle blocks. And this set actually goes from quarter degree all the way up to 30 degrees over here. So I have quarter, half, and then one, two, three, four, five. And then from there it goes by 10 degrees, 10, 15, 20, 25, and 30. Now you've also got the complementary angles. So the 30 degree triangle is 30 there and 60 there. Likewise, we have 25, 65, 20, 70, so on and so forth. Now these are great for setups in the mill for angling apart uh, rather than angling the head. You can also use these to add to each other or subtract from each other. So for instance, if I wanted 33 degrees, I could take my 3 degree triangle and my 30 degree triangle and I could put them together. If I needed 27 degrees, I could turn my 3 degree around and Bob's your uncle, I've got 27 degrees. Now these aren't as accurate as a sign bar per se, uh, nowhere near actually, uh, but they'll get you within a degree probably and probably more like half a degree and in most cases that's totally fine. For some reason this set doesn't have a 45, 45, 90, but um, you know you can buy those separately, they're not very expensive. Now they also make a set of angle blocks that has notches in them, angled notches. So it looks just like a little parallel and has a, a cutout at the particular angles that we're looking at. So uh, it goes from quarter, half, and then one, two, three, four, five, and it actually all uh, goes all the way up to 45 degrees. I don't own a set of those because they're a lot more expensive than these. They're about $70. I'll just grab a picture of one off the internet and put it into the video well, right about here. So one problem I have with these sets is the thickness. They are just over a quarter of an inch thick. There are 255 thousandths on all the ones that I measured. And that's just a really inconvenient size because um, sure they want them to not fall over while you're trying to set things up, but they end up being thicker than a quarter inch piece of material, which is something that I commonly work with. So one of these days I'm going to set them all up on the surface grinder and, and skim about ten thousandths off. Uh, in the meantime I'll show you what you can do to, uh, to get around that if you do have a thickness issue. So in setting these up you would take whatever angle you want. In this case uh, I've got a 15 degree block and you can put it down in your vise. You bridge the gap in between the ways or you put it all the way over to one side. Uh, whatever you need to in order to get the clearance that you need. You can also set it up on parallels so it sits up higher if you've got a smaller piece. Um, and then you would take your material and you'd put it down on top of that. Now your material in this case is, um, is angled by 15 degrees. And like I said before you can add and subtract so if you needed 17 or whatever uh, you would just put in the appropriate blocks. Um, now here's where those uh, notched angle blocks are nice because you can see my part is sliding all over the place. That notch would basically act like a V block just at a different angle than 45. You would then go ahead and clamp the vise on this. Um, now here's where I was talking about the thickness. This is quarter inch diameter brass and it's even a little oversized. But if I were to clamp the vise right now it would be clamping the block instead of the material. What I do in situations like this is grab something soft, either um, uh, a piece of thin aluminum, something like that, or uh, grab a notepad. This is the thin cardstock on the back side of a notepad. You can just cut a little piece off and then put that in between your vise jaw and your part. Even if this was clamped a little bit onto the uh, angle block itself, it would still be okay because the cardstock is soft enough that it's uh, going to give a little bit and it's going to grip both the piece and the angle block. Now at this point you can go ahead and make all of your movements and you can see that the piece is nice and rock solid in there. Now you can also use these blocks as a uh, quick and dirty indexing device. Maybe you want to cut a hex on the end of something and you don't have a dividing head or it only takes 5C collets and the part is bigger than that. Well, you can use the, in this case, the 30, 60, 90 triangle 
Um, and for your first cut, you would actually just put it in there, make your facing cut to the right depth, and then on the next pass, you would put the flat that you just created against this block and make another cut and keep on going until you've got a hex. So I'm going to go ahead and demonstrate that. So here I am creating the first flat. My raw stock is inch and a quarter in diameter and I want a one inch hex, so I'm making the distance between the flat and the opposite side one and one eighth of an inch. Deburring is incredibly important, especially for an operation like this, because a burr could potentially affect the angle that you're getting. Likewise, you have to make sure that everything is free of chips. So here I'm setting up for the second cut. I'm putting my previously made flat against the angle block, and I'm using the parallels to bridge the gap in between the ways of the vise, and so I can get the part centered in the vise. Once the part is securely clamped, I can go ahead and remove my angle block and my parallels, but I will have to make sure to touch off on the part with my cutter on every single cut. So now we have the roughly triangular shape here. What we're going to do is put the flats against a parallel now and cut the opposite side to length. So let's go ahead and do that. So there you have it, a hex made just with angle blocks. I hope this helps, and I'll see you next time.